Hey, this is Taylor. Today I'm going to be tearing down the new Dell XPS 15 laptop. I'm really excited about these new XPS machines. I think that they're going to be great competition for the MacBook Pro lineup. They are cheaper, they have an SD card slot, and most importantly, I think they're going to be significantly more repairable. On the back side, we can see right off the bat they're using Torx screws instead of Penelope screws to secure the lower case, which is a win. Let's get those out of the way and see what we find inside. Often the lower case is screwed and clipped in place. I'm guessing this will have some clips. Dell has actually done something really cool here. They put a small notch on the lower case where you can insert a opening pick or a pry tool to get the lower case free. Now that all the clips are free, we can remove this lower case. And bam! Once the lower case is removed, we can see the cooling solution. We've got two fans here with some heat pipes running over the processor. Below that, we've got two sodium slots for memory and then two M.2 slots for storage. Only one of them is populated here, but you can stick another M.2 drive in this one right here. Having upgradable memory and storage in a laptop is huge for repairability. Most modern laptops have soldered on storage and memory, which means should either of those components go bad, you are looking at either some intense micro soldering or you're just out of luck. Before we get to either of those things, I'm going to disconnect the battery and see if we can replace that. It's always a good idea to disconnect the battery of anything that you're repairing before you do any kind of repair. This one is being a little stubborn I'm bad at cables, but I'm not as bad as KK, so I should be able to do this. Dell has included a little pull tab here on the wire. I'm going to try and use that to kind of coax it out. With the battery disconnected, I'm going to see if we can remove it right away. Batteries will eventually need to be replaced in any device, so it's good to see how easy that is to do. This one looks like it's held in place with Phillips screws. I'm gonna swap out my Torx bit for what looks like a Phillips Zero. That looks great. These screws are a sight for sore eyes. Most MacBooks and even other thin and light laptops have batteries that are glued in. KK just replaced the battery in a 2015 MacBook Pro and I think that took her two hours and if this goes according to plan, I could have this one removed in two minutes. And we should be good to go now. Let's see. Oh my goodness, yeah. Sweet. Looks like along the bottom here, there is a cable that connects the two speakers. That's kind of routed along the battery. It's taped in place here. I'm just going to get rid of that tape. There we go. All right, the battery's out. Two minutes, take that, KK. This battery is surprisingly thin and light. It's rated at 56 watt hours, and hopefully that's good enough to get you through a day. Next, I'm going to go for the speakers, just because they look easy. And then you can just lift them out. Guess we should disconnect them. There we go. Speakers are out. Next I'm going to pull these RAM sticks out. These are little sodium sticks. You pull the arms apart and then pull out the stick. These are 4GB sticks. Of course you can configure that on Dell's website when you buy the machine. Or since they are replaceable, you can just buy your own RAM and put it in. I'm going to go for the SSD. This is just another Phillips screw. The heat shield slides off of this little rail here. And underneath, we see a tiny M.2 drive with this little adapter. Let's pull that out. This is a 256 gigabyte drive. Again, configurable and upgradable, so whatever you want. You know, so far this laptop is really impressing me. 
It's been a while since we've done a teardown of a Windows laptop aside from the Surface laptops, which I'll get to in a minute. But coming from Apple laptops, this is astronomically better in terms of repairability. Having all of these components accessible right off the bat is great for the longevity of the device because you will be able to upgrade or replace them whenever you want. The Surface laptops, the latest ones, the Surface Laptop 3, they actually do have replaceable SSDs, but the battery itself is glued in and still really a pain to get to. I've only been working on this for like 20 minutes and I've already been able to replace almost every component that I could see myself needing to replace within the next four years. So that is great for the repairability. The next thing I think I'm going to go for is the fans. They look like they are just held in place with Phillips screws, which is a recurring theme here. Great. Now that everything is loose, let's disconnect these real quick. And we can pull them out. With the cooling system out of the way, we can see these empty die spaces on the motherboard. Those are there because you can equip this laptop with a GPU. Anything up to an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti with 4GB of RAM. Before we get the motherboard out though, we need to disconnect a few cables and unscrew a few screws. So let's do that. We'll start up here with these port shields. It looks like the SD card reader is on a separate board from the main board which is actually a very good thing. That way, if the SD card reader dies, then you only have to replace this tiny board instead of this huge board. And there is the little SD card board. You'll notice that a lot of things on this motherboard are actually labeled, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you can see a lot of these screw holes have tiny little words telling you what kind of screw you will need for that hole. You've got battery label by this connector over here. Cables are labeled. Very nice stuff to see from Dell. We will undo this keyboard connector and then unscrew the display cable bracket. I do want to mention that the display, which is another thing that is likely to break over the lifetime of this laptop, does look like it's replaceable right off the bat, as soon as you open the laptop, you don't need to replace any of these other components before you do that swap, which is really cool. Looks like we also need to undo this antenna bracket. There we go. This motherboard is equipped with a Intel Core i5-10300H processor. I mentioned the SD card reader is replaceable on its own motherboard, but these three USB-C ports are not. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. Next, I'm going to go for the trackpad, which is held in place with these Phillips screws. We're just going to get this antenna wire out of the way real quick and disconnect a cable or two. Just one. And there we go. This trackpad is actually pretty gigantic. It reminds me a lot of the MacBook trackpads. Personally, I think they're too big. The last thing I'm gonna take out here is the display. To do that, I'm gonna take out the screws on the hinges here. Last one, and ta-da. This would be replaced as a single unit, so if something were to go wrong with the keyboard, you would need to do all of this disassembly to get to the lower case, and then swap it out for a new keyboard. This is a 1080p panel. It does not have touch, but you can spec the machine to have up to a 4K touch panel. These cables do look like they might be integrated into the display like the MacBook cables, which means should one of the cables fail, you may have to replace the whole screen. With everything disassembled, I'm still really impressed by the Dell XPS 15. The battery and the screen are immediately replaceable as soon as you open the lower case. The RAM and the storage are upgradable. The only thing that I can see being a downside is this keyboard and uppercase assembly. They are one unit, so you can't replace the keyboard by itself, which is kind of a bummer and it takes quite a bit of disassembly to get down to the unit. But 
All that said, I can't give you a score just yet. I need to go talk to the team. I'll be back in just one minute with the score for you. Hey, it's me again. It's been more than a minute. It's actually a couple days later, but I am finally here ready to give the Dell XPS 15 a score. It's earned a nine out of 10 on our repairability scale. With all that said, I actually really recommend this laptop. It's got a nine out of 10 repairability score, so you know that it will last you for a long time. You'll be able to replace just about any component that you need to over the lifetime of the machine. It turns out that the display is actually modular. You can lift up this plastic bezel and then another plastic cover, which will give you access to the stretch release adhesive, which will let you remove the display all by itself. So you do not have to remove the whole assembly. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. You can follow me at Taylor C. Dixon on Twitter and make sure you get subscribed to this YouTube channel for more teardowns and repair content like this. We've got a lot of cool things coming up, so you will want to get subscribed. See you in the next one.